here what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's kush back at it again with another new york giants update video now you guys may notice a difference in audio that's because i recently got a couple of new things a new mic um oh wow i just hit the mic by accident an audio interface and stuff that i'm still trying to figure out how to use in fact i everything's at like base value so to speak right now i did not edit anything much um I'm, I just plugged it in and I'm recording straight off of it. I still have to set up quite a few things. Uh, I have a desk stand here that I have to set up. So it's going to be a good amount of distance away from my mouth. You know, got to set up the pop filter. But then also with the software, I have to figure out how to use this new software called Ableton. Um, I usually use Audacity to record, but Ableton is a, I guess it gives you a bit more control and it is better for this whole audio interface thing that I still have to learn how to use. But this is it at base, so base value before any type of actual like editing and stuff happens to it and editing is the right word but just adjustments right so let me know how it sounds um it's definitely gonna sound a bit different and it's gonna sound better when i figure things out i, I just can't figure it out right now but all that being said that's just all jargon you guys didn't need to hear just letting you know quickly on some updates to the channel we do have two updates regarding the team today um daniel jones is continuing to practicing despite the fact that he has that strained neck injury which we're not too sure about what that is and i have a quote from rob sale talking about Matt Pert and Nate Solder and in general how those guys are doing it and exactly why he has Solder ahead of Pert. But with that being said, let's get right into it. So first off with Daniel Jones, um, we all know he had that neck injury very early on in the Philadelphia Eagles game. In fact, the second game, I mean the second play from scrimmage, that first run play where, you know, the Giants continue to run this guy into linebackers and then Daniel continues to not slide and bam, we have another injury. Now, initially, uh, I read from an NFL.com article on um, back on Tuesday, I believe it was. He was ruled out for this Sunday's game against the Miami Dolphins. And our backup, Mike Glennon, the giraffe. Funnily enough, Daniel has a neck injury. Our backup has like the biggest neck in the league. Pause. But our backup, Mike Glennon, was ruled as a starter going into that game. And then we also, I think that very same day, we signed a quarterback off of the Buffalo Bills practice squad and Jake Fromm, a 2020 fifth round pick. Um, we signed him as insurance as well, you know, as another backup in addition to Brian Lewerke on the, uh, I think he's either signed to our practice squad or we just signed him as a backup to Mike Lennon. Either way, Glennon was named the starter, Jones was ruled out, and, you know, we had another quarterback come in because, you know, we're, we lost our starting quarterback. That's what it seemed like on Tuesday. Now we're sitting here Thursday, two days later. And Joe Judge has something else to say. Um, it was also yesterday, Wednesday, that he did say something as well regarding the Jones situation. But this marks two days in a row now that Daniel is seen at practice. He's jogging around. He seems to be some sort of participant. I'm going to read a couple of lines from an article on BigBlueView.com here for you guys so, and, and kind of let you draw your own conclusions. The way they're framing it right now, it, he might actually play as crazy as that sounds because we were in a completely different situation just two days earlier. Here's the article. Quarterback Daniel Jones practiced with his New York Giants teammates for a second straight day on Thursday, perhaps increasing the likelihood that he will be available to play Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. Jones was officially listed as a limited participant. Head coach Joe Judge said this is really more the doctors at this point when asked if there was anything Jones needed to show in order for him to start on Sunday. Judge indicated he could go as far as Jones being a game time decision this Sunday. I would have no problem doing that with Daniel, Judge said. A judge said Jones looked like Daniel during Wednesday's practice, whatever that means. Hopefully his health keeps on improving throughout the course of the season and obviously in the short term as well. And then like I mentioned earlier, there was some quotes from Wednesday as well basically where judge told the media that he was preparing to play in regards to daniel jones and he would not rule him out so this is a complete 180 from just two days ago what does that suggest i mean it suggests that the doctors probably feel really good about daniel they feel really good about how he's progressing and maybe you know the worst of it is over maybe it's not as bad of an injury as they initially thought which would only be a blessing in disguise for giants and, and what I hope it is, is that he's truly healthy. Because listen, I do not want a repeat of Arizona Cardinals last year. We were all told that Daniel Jones was fully healthy entering the Cardinals game. And everybody with two eyes and good eyesight saw that Daniel Jones was not fully healthy. He couldn't protect himself. And the dude, it just was a bad game for him. He got sacked, what, six, seven times? It was terrible. 
I really hope that this time around, Joe Judge and the doctors, that Daniel Jones is actually fully healthy and he's cleared. And this man is going to go in there and have a good game and be able to protect himself because don't put the quarterback at risk like that. All right. It's not a smart decision. And I don't want to see a repeat of last year. I think that was probably one of Judge's worst decisions as a head coach of this New York Giants football team. So if, if he's good, he's good. Otherwise, do not force him in here to for, you know, for a slim shot of winning this game. We will roll with the backups, we'll roll with the defense, and we'll see how it goes. Now hopping over to the other update for the team. It is in regards to our offensive line coach, Rob Sale. One of the only coaches I really have complete trust in with this Giants team so far. And a lot of that has to do with the early performance of the offensive line, I'd say in the first eight games of the season. A lot of you, I'm not sure if you remember or not, but the O-line, of course, was hit with injuries early on. Nick Gates went out, Shane Lemieux went out. We were just hit with injuries back to back to back. And somehow, some way, the offensive lines continued to do an admirable job in pass protection for, I'd say, the first five or six weeks before Andrew Thomas went out. When Andrew Thomas went out, it's like you lost your last pillar on the offensive line and they all collapsed. However, Rob Sale was doing like and going above and beyond with everything in, on this offensive line with the pieces he had for them to give Daniel some time in the pocket and it was working for a while and with Andrew Thomas back I'm seeing that as well he is having a little bit of time it's not a good offensive line by any means but it's performing above its pay grade so to speak and now of course Rob Sale the big question or one of the big questions there's a lot of them with this O'Lara now is why is Nate Solder starting over Matt Pert and well somebody actually I guess asked that question and sales answer i'm not sure how you guys are gonna feel about it now this is from a giants wire article um and this is what it says the setback has been the lack of development from second year tackle matt Pert, a third round pick in the 2020 nfl draft that the team believed would take a huge step this year indeed per has become a backup to veteran nate solder of all players the reason why solder is starting over per at right tackle is simple he's better at this point in time and then now this is a quote from rob sale plain and simple you watch every play when andrew was out body of work nate is the better player right now offensive line coach rob sale told reporters on thursday sale also said that solder was more physical and that Pert needs to go out there and put your hand around somebody's neck and freaking choke them to quickly comment on that, that's something we've seen since his rookie year, all right? That last part, physicality, having that dog in you, and just, just being a nasty offensive lineman, which I feel like should be a requirement for starting offensive linemen in this league. Now, Nate Solar isn't known to be a nasty offensive lineman, but he's better at being physical than Matt Pert is, and that's ridiculous because Matt Pert is a huge dude. I think he's one of the biggest dudes on the line, you know, in terms of height and wingspan and whatnot. Um, he should be more physical than he actually is. Shout out to PTA Sports. From the moment Matt Pert was drafted, PTA said he needed to be more physical. And now we're in year two and he's still not doing it. The reason why people aren't going to like this answer is because they're going to say there's no way Nate Solder is better overall than Matt Pert right now. I can't say because I'm not out there, um, you know, or at least I should say I'm not reviewing every single snap that they're playing. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's a situation where for on a snap to snap basis, Solder is better. It's just that whenever they whiff, solder has the bigger whiffs like that could completely be what the situation is and then i know one thing a lot of fans might not be happy with is just the development of matt pair in general now he is a project player and just by name by definitions they would take longer to develop than you know and not a project player i guess whatever the opposite of a project player is but that's what matt Pert is and that's why his development is also taking a bit longer you know you would have hoped that at this point he is better than solder on snaps on that basis he is a guy with that dog inside of him but he simply isn't and it really does beg the question and something i've been saying for a while now the giants should really look at drafting a tackle in this upcoming draft because we're not sure maybe matt pert he could be a great swing tackle for us but that doesn't mean starter and that's kind of where it looks like it's headed. But guys, you let me know what you think about both topics. Put your thoughts and comments down below. If anybody could help me figure out this Ableton software. And, you know, when I finish completely setting up the mic, we'll, we'll have some crispy audio, hopefully. But that's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.